one? You're obviously confused in the round. to Slurmcast, a podcast for no reason. Today we'll be discussing Season 4, Episode 9, Teenage Mutant Leela's Hurdles. My name is Michelle Berlingame. With me are Tommy Roulette. That was a mouthful. Yeah, and Pete Woodward. That's me. <laughs> Joining us today is podcaster and friend of the show, George Dunn. I am not your friend. You are so my friend. I, I don't know if he's achieved friend of the show status yet. That might I hardly be achieved oh, podcaster on. status. We've yeah. all been podcaster on his podcast. Sure. That's Except true. We've for done, Tom. We've done a number of crossover events. That's true. Okay. We have. Tom, are you okay with George being a friend of the show? I mean, it's his second mm, appearance. I second. think that qualifies him as friend of the show. Yeah. Okay. But it's like we're a little weary. Right? Yeah. Like that. you can come over for dinner. But we're going to kick you out before bedtime. That's fine. I usually get too you drunk before the end of dinner anyway. You can't crash on the couch or anything. That's fine. Okay. That's good. Uh, those goddamn chronotons. Here they are again. Yeah. Um, well, I, the Jumbotron, Tom. Uh, back to a dancing wolf. Is this the same wolf that's been plaguing us for the last few episodes? No. This one is called Moonlight for Two. And uh, it's, it's like it's a cartoon wolf. that stars a character called Goopy Gear. <laughs> Wait, what? who's not who's not as racist Wait, as that name should yeah, sound? It's, it's not the, goopy, <laughs> the Goopy Gear. Goopy Gear. The goopy what, gear. Is it is it G E A R? Like he's some kind of G E E R. He's oh, like so I, I mean, my next guess was going to be G E R E, like it was a nepotism thing. I'm always related to Richard Goopy Gear cosplay. So oh, he, when I saw the the clip on the Jumbotron, I was like, I think I remember this cartoon. And I I looked it up on YouTube and I watched the whole thing because they're like, those merry melodies are like five minutes long. Yeah, they're also insufferable. And it was, yes. yeah, it, I, I didn't even make it through the full five minutes, but I did remember it. I remembered watching it. I had it on VHS tape when I was a kid. Well, there is a dancing wolf and then there was like a dancing proto Kool-Aid well, man. It's like, that was a, a furnace. That was like a coal burning furnace in a barn. So it's two dogs that start out and it's like, like a little girl dog and a boy dog and they're going on a date and they're they're singing and they walk to this barnyard dance. How were people entertained by that? That's like when I it see was clowns. 1932 and they were like things are moving on a screen in front I know. of my face. I mean yeah. there's like, that. I just I feel like there's got to be outtakes where one dog mounts the other. <laughs> Because that's what we're really having, like that old lady on the tramp thing. That. Yeah, like what? whoever's animating it is clearly messed up enough. To I mean, I like the style of animation, but it's just always so like boring to watch. Like, I mean, I get it. Like, you're th- the '30s, like you're eating soup every day. Like, I mean, if you're lucky, <laughs> yeah. you might just be having old shoes. <laughs> I'm always eating old shoes. I'm at that point in my life. Well, is- single in my mid twenties. <laughs> <laughs> kidding me? Is that over in the specialty department at that grocery <laughs> store too? It's like the finest tanned leather. You can spread it with this delicious they call it gourmet camembert. Jerky. That's basically what it is. There's a whole gourmet jerky market out there now that Giant Eagle's even in on. Yeah, so I can it's, only imagine. It's awesome. It's, like, think it's so? expensive. I'm not I done a jerky. I feel like it always looks good until I open the bag. And it's then I'm chewy. always dissatisfied. Yeah. Have you ever had homemade jerky? Oh, man. Uh, like venison jerky, yes, which is fantastic. They're, like, I think the Giant Eagle brand of the jerky is mm. actually pretty good. Mm. I like it. Well, I think just I've, repackage something else. I don't, yeah, but I don't know. It's We have bison jerky. It's a I nice that. snack. That was like... Uh, or no, a meal. Noted a racist meal. and wing nut <laughs> uh, Ted Nugent. Uh, had a brand of it wasn't you mean my idol jerky it was called biltong which was i think it was just basically sold up in michigan but it's just jerky just it's, it's a different kind of jerky and the picture on the cover of the bag of jerky was a picture of ted nugent riding a How buffalo did we get on beef jerky <laughs> i i'm talking about eating shoes and soup oh <laughs> 1932 you follow yeah. that have you ever have you ever had squid jerky Ugh. So like that's uh, I haven't had squid jerky, but I've had like squid tentacle crisps. Like (sighs) they're like you know those veggie straws. It's like that, but it's squid. They're so fucking good. Sounds they're so good. 
Oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't eat seafood, though. So, so it's okay. nice. Weird. If you go down to, like, the Asian grocery stores in Asia Town, where, you, you know, where you get the deep cuts, like the raw frogs and stuff, mm-hmm. like, they have a bunch of different and apparently every of every city everywhere probably has one of these. So. At, least. Yeah. <laughs> At least. That's where you go to get gremlins, right? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. the mog- but the mogwai are in the back. Mm-hmm. You have to go to the section that's, like, stainless steel pots and dish soap. Uh, oh, you, you don't want to get the critters. You don't and, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tucked or even, Underneath. God forbid, the ghoulies. I mean, the, here's, the, here's the trick. You don't ask. You just wander around until you find them, but you have to look confident because if they get the idea that you don't, you know, that you're, like, uh, sketchy about it or anything, they'll totally freeze you out. Yeah. But if you walk back and you're just like, I'm supposed to be here, clearly. You're saying you're looking Which, for a Christmas present for your son? You're a white man, so <laughs> that's kind of the default mode as... You know, we does our birthright, right? I birth know exactly right? what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. <laughs> you're I'm obviously get, you're I'm, wrong. I'm gonna get what I want, so I'll just wait around. Yeah, for just just exude entitlement, and the Mogwai will find you. Do you think that's where the professor found Pazuzu? Yeah. Possibly. I had I just wanted to button it with one thing, Tom. The only reason yes. I brought up all of that stuff was that they have at the Asian supermarket so many different kinds of jerky. There's pork jerky and beef jerky, and squid jerky, and they have, like, fruit flavors and all kinds of things. Like, it's a real jerky bonanza. So if you think... That That's going the episode to the title, right? <laughs> jerky bonanza. It's, it was my nickname for several years. <laughs> you are one big piece of salty yeah. meat. But, it, but fruit punch flavored pork jerky. Can't recommend it enough. Oh, oh man. Right. Just saying. Fruit flavored pork jerky? Yes. Delicious. What fruit is it flavored like? Punch. I mean, I could Punch see like isn't a fruit. I could see like apple. <laughs> uh, well, like uh, just or like yeah. Take like my word for it. Applesauce goes with pork, and you stuff put like an that. apple in a roast pig. Yeah, you could put cherries on stuff. You could put you pineapple. Cherries. I know this is controversial. Oh. You could put pineapple on just about. Well, you anything. put pineapple on ham. Yeah. I've watched cartoons before for sure. <laughs> like, and then it'll make snot, uh, uh, smoke. Vapor noises like a nostril that just draws you in. <laughs> um, I, I usually float from my nose. Yeah. Do you think gargoyle poop would really be white? How, we well, don't know I think that we're, was poop. We're skipping the fact that he has a gargoyle. I don't find through that. college. That tracks for the professor, though. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. I mean, like, just well, I think even in the last episode that we we did. Um, there was somewhere Hermes and the professor are like beating something with rakes. Like a bat, a vat full of uh, badgers. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, like it could have, it could have been a delivery that he kept. It could have been something he brought in from another dimension. I don't know. Why did he name it that? He's got man-eating anteaters. Maybe that's just his name. It has to be a reference to something. It is. Like Uh, Pazuzu? Yeah. 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 It's uh, from the exorcist. That's the, the, the demon from the exorcist is Pazuzu. Really? Oh, why didn't I not know that? I don't That's know. That's a very non-threatening name. I did I did it research seems... on Pazuzu too. I was like fully that much. To be like a, a <laughs> I didn't do that much. Clash of the Titans so, kind of thing. Like. Pazuzu was the, <laughs> the demon in the Exorcist. Pazuzu also actually, if anyone has watched the most recent Treehouse of Horror, there was a uh, Maggie got a Pazuzu statue. You mean and... that really, really upsetting Treehouse of Horror <laughs> episode? <laughs> We're not going to get. This is a different <laughs> podcast, George. Yeah, I don't. I don't accept anything after two thousand two as canon. So just leave it at the door, okay, George? Well, it's Train House of Horrors, so technically none of them it's are canon. Not, yeah, you know what? That's coming from you, who yelled at me for twenty minutes about how I cheated for picking one-offs on the second shot. You did. You you cheated. Not hardcore. all of them were one-offs. Um. So Pazuzu was also in this year's Tree House of Horror. Uh, Pazuzu, it is a, he is a, a god in Assyrian and Babylonian mythology, the king of the demons of the wind. I think if we say his name too many times, we might summon him, so we better stop. Does, well, so Pazuzu, Pazuzu. When Pazuzu. they say demon of the wind, does that mean like farts? Or does that mean like weather? <laughs> I wish he were a fart demon. I he mean, might be. He shits cool. on the professor. It's the first thing he does. <laughs> Which, again, taking it back three minutes. Do you think the gargoyle poo would be white for real? I think it would. Is yeah. it bat it's poo? like a bird. Bat poo's white, so I would assume. Don't bats poop? Uh, no, that's owls. Go Never on. mind. Pellets. I was thinking. Mm. No, which they don't poop. That did yeah, you know? They owls, throw them they up. Throw them up. Mm-hmm. Yes. You ever dissected one of those? Have you guys cool. had this conversation on this podcast? I no, feel like I've heard it but my wife makes jewelry out of it, or okay, did at nice. some point. So that's cool. That she would have. Owl pellets shipped to us from some. I don't even want to fuck. If it wasn't from. you guys who made this po- the conversation, up, or, 
the thing about uh, owl poop on podcasts seems to be a big trend recently. I yeah, <clears throat> we were we were ahead of the curve on that. But <laughs> owl poop is not poop. It's the pellets are not poop unless you're a rabbit or a squirrel. Anyway, <laughs> I think gargoyle poop would be a different color. I don't know what color, but white seems a little too birdy for me. Mm. It never came up on that show, Gargoyles, that cartoon It depends show. on what they eat. Yeah. I don't think they ever showed the, the gargoyles pooping on gargoyles. But do you think gargoyles are mammalian or reptilian in nature? Probably closer to reptiles, depending on the gargoyle. Like, Azuzu is reptilian. But doesn't he have a mustache? I think they're aviary. Well, I mean, they're, there's, they're there's, like birds they're like bearded or bats. lizards and stuff like that. I mean, that, that, that kind of thing. <sighs> yeah, okay. Because I think the gargoyles and gargoyles I are also lizards. I can subscribe to that. All right. Is he scaly? We'll just assume that he's scaly. If someone has... You he know. has horns. I don't see... I've never seen a bird with horns. Um, bon we. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, are, is there such a thing as a horned bird? Well, there's horned lizards. Yeah. I don't horned know. owl, but that's not horned. Yeah. I'm not an it's ornithologist. Called... Is that what the bird doctors are? Or scientists are? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. We're already so far Something off the like rails. That. Um, but oh, the, uh, oh, the thing that struck me as being strange when they started off on the gargoyle hunt was that the professor like immediately became super sexist yeah. in a way that has never been displayed before on the show. Like the captain of his ship and yeah. crew and the most competent person he employs yeah. is a woman. Who uh, he hired. Who, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, who, who he hired. And has, she's cheated death a number of times because his expectation is that whatever crew he's paying <laughs> will not last through the mission yeah. every time he sends them out. So for him to just be like, you're a woman, no. It just, it, it's, it's very it's odd. Driving a, weird... a spaceship, not looking for the fastest route to the mall, something like that, <laughs> whatever he said about the mall. I think it's a weird it, setup it. just to have a bunch of old people jokes. Old people driving jokes. Mm. Yeah. It's like uh, Florida jokes. <laughs> yeah. Let it's me like just scoot the cafe. seat up a bit. <laughs> Home of the I, heat lamp. It made me think. Well, okay, so the professor is an old person driver. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they beat that to death. But the, like, there's so many parts about that even that just made me kind of scratch my head. Like, if they're just going to Florida, why are they in interstellar travel? Like, yeah. why did they go up into the lane? Like, it's couldn't like a Florida they just planet. fly, like, an airplane? Because I think he was looking for... Pazuzu, Pazuzu, and then just determined he was oh, in he went Florida. Back. Oh, he went and back then, for lunch, basically. And then he went back oh, at two thirty in the afternoon yeah. to Gummer's Cafeteria. Yeah, um, the home of the heat lamp. The the thing that so like the old people driver jokes while they're trite and hacky and all of that. The thing that it really hammers home for me is like if you ever have to drive during the day on the weekdays that are not Saturday or Sunday, the other days, um, you will in- invariably get stuck behind old people, and it is fucking mad. Oh, it's infuriating. Mm-hmm. It's, it is really, like, it just, I, I mean, without fail, because I, like, I don't even have to leave the house anymore. I, don't, I work from home unless I'm traveling, and then I don't drive. So, like, when I do have to leave for a doctor's appointment, I'm like, I'm just going to, like, I run an errand. I got an hour. I'll get right back. I leave the house as soon as I turn onto a main street. It's like, mm, you know, somebody in a, a Buick. It's always a fucking Buick. Yeah. Because I don't think they sell Buicks to people that are under 75 years old. I just They're don't, wide I, and safe. They like card you when you walk in. <laughs> My first car actually was a Buick. But was it a hand me down that was, it was bought by from an, old an old person? Guy. Yeah. So there you go. It's actually from a dead person. Like tiny person. tanks. Yeah. It's, it's a. Uh, that's a technicality. Like, that's the only way. Although, I... I crashed mine a couple of times. <laughs> and he probably did, too. Yeah, I don't know. It was... <laughs> they're, they weren't very loud claps. Uh, what happened to this uh, Buick of yours, Michelle? Uh, it was like a... It was a 95, and I bought it in 2007, and it only had 40,000 miles on it. That sounds like a moment to an old guy. <laughs> and then I drove it for a day, and then it basically turned to dust on the inside. Like, all of the... <laughs> like, the engine started to just crumble. In, like, like sands to the hourglass. Yes. Everything... It was fine as it was preserved in the parking lot for 10 years or whatever, not having moved. And then it just... 
it, like after a day of driving, everything seized and snapped and broke. And then I had to basically put as much money as I spent buying it into getting it to run again. Oh my God, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. And low, then I crashed it a whole bunch of times and then it miles, finally died. Low miles on uh, old cars is never a good thing to buy because that means they've just been sitting. Mm-hmm. And then especially up here, like in Florida, you could probably get away with that. But The winter is a killer, especially yeah. if it's just sitting. Yeah. Well, it, uh, I actually wasn't the one that killed it. I gave it to my uncle when I inherited my dad's, like, 98 Jeep Cherokee, I gave uh-huh. the Buick to my uncle, and then my uncle crashed it again and cracked the engine block. That thing probably would have driven forever. <laughs> Was this uncle of yours actually Elvis? And no, the it is, it is the it? uncle. It is the uncle who I was talking about last week, who uh, was a short pants and wintertime uncle. <laughs> <laughs> you could just say uncle. Well, we had a discussion about. Yeah, it last it's, week. It's, you haven't heard <laughs> it yet, uncles. George. But we were. It, it was a whole thing. Ah. you know, like people with no shame. That's all. Um. The, I thought the whole high beams thing was weird. Like, I get the joke. Yeah, but. They blew up the Deep Space Nine. <laughs> yeah. Was that what that, was that spaceship was? I think so. Yep. Um, yeah, he was just, like, destroying stuff. And again, like, he didn't... I don't know, the professor... It just seemed like... It all the, seemed really forced. Yeah, it was like, like he tipped off into complete senility. I mean, this whole this whole episode kind of feels like Futurama by, Futurama by numbers. Like, it doesn't... Like, it, everything just kind of feels like... Here's a joke that I feel like would be in Futurama as opposed to like, this, this is just a weird episode altogether. Like, like, like we'll get into it later too. Yeah. But like, it Even just the way it really, closes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, just the way it closes strange. is very weird. Yeah. Like, the, it's, it's entire structure is weird. All the jokes are just kind of whatever. Like there's some funny ones. Like it's, you know, de-ageifying or whatever it's called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's this year's, uh, what is it? Sharp cartilage enema. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like there's some funny things that I really like, like ultra porn and all that. Like, are, does it have the writer credited, Tom? Jeff Jeff Westbrook. That sounds like a made up name. I've heard that name before. Uh, yeah, he's on the credits. Uh oh, he's on the credits every week. Is he a? It's probably it's a producer. Like an the episodes that he's thing. written is the day the Earth stood stupid, which is an amazing episode. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. uh thirty percent Iron Chef, and then this one was he it was the mm-hmm. main writer on. Okay, may well. Um, maybe he just I mean, broke the, the story. Yeah, I, I mean it's not a bad episode. It's, it's not. It's, but it's a, not one of my favorites. No. no, I I used to remember this one pretty fondly though. I, like, and, and to be fair, like I didn't think it was a bad episode until you started pointing out your criticisms, George. Which <laughs> right. I agree with one hundred percent. It's not a bad episode. It's not. It's just not the best. It's yeah. not bad. It's but... just a weird one. Like it's it's it seems a little rushed. Th- this right. also feels like it could be a like a what if scenario. Yeah, thing. this is almost like an anthology of interest bit, bit kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have a lot of questions about. How continuity and just no, not even continuity, just stuff in the episode, like the nuclear powered teeth. No, I have no questions about that. What are your questions? You don't put those in your mouth. Why not? Because they're nuclear powered. Yeah. Well, if <laughs> you they, have go, in they your go pocket, in your pocket, unless your pocket is lined with lead, he probably does have lead lined pockets. He's yeah. probably sterile, so who cares? That's who. He's I mean, probably already irradiated. He might get superpowers just by <laughs> sticking them in his head. But I i mean, the conceit of having fake teeth that chew everything up so you can slurp it through a straw, that was funny. Yeah. But i it made me wonder. That's good uh, meat. <laughs> I got really, I got weirdly upset when Leela, like, this is my nitpicking, but like when Leela said that the ship could go 99% light speed when in the episode with Qbert. Yeah. Um, he says that they, they find out that the ship actually moves space itself instead of the ship. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. George. And they also made another thing where they increase the speed of light. Yeah. Uh, right. That another, that's a continued, continued. God, thank error. you. I like this. You're going to make us hate this episode by the time <laughs> we're done. George. Welcome to my world. I'm miserable all the time. Well, that, maybe you and I can apply for angry crotchety grandpa discount just, cards. Yeah. It's just me. <laughs> It's just me and Morrissey at this point. <laughs> oh, I think you've got more gumption than Morrissey. If the wind Slightly. blows the wrong way, he cancels gigs now. 
He claims that I'm being sick. Well, his, the the, the angry, crotchety old man discount card was supposed to be a lifetime discount, but his expired. <laughs> he's a, and he's only 161 years old. Yeah. I know. Well, maybe, you know what? But I've, going back to what was the episode where he um, he went to that retirement home in the sky oh, or yeah. whatever? You know, That's the same episode. That, yeah, you're only yeah. supposed to live until 150. Yeah, okay. So he's already cheated death by staying, you know what I mean? Like That's he, true. He faked yeah. his age. That makes sense. So, yeah, he would have lived a lifetime already. Yeah, and they and by their off. standards. Because they don't want to, I mean, that's that's 11 more years of discounts at a weird <laughs> How dare he ask for a dollar what, off? What, how, how do you all feel about buffets? I sort of work for a buffet, in a sense. Like, I mean... So we do that. Yeah, I mean, you, I, you literally do, but it, I'm thinking more along the lines of the all you. No, can like a hometown all. buffet, because shit, like, where you work, it, it adds up very, very oh, yeah. quickly. <laughs> Nine dollars a pound, where it's like, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, yeah. No, I, I used to love like hometown buffet. Like mm-hmm. when I was living mm-hmm. with my grandparents, it was like we went there every you know Tuesday or whatever yeah. discount day was. Uh, you know, I'd just get a small amount of mac and cheese and then just fill up on ice cream. For sure. Um, but in general, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> I, re- I think yeah. it really depends on the buffet that you go to. Because I've had some some good buffet experiences yeah. and some not so good buffet experiences. Yeah, yeah. I like, there was a there used to be a Ponderosa in Rocky River. Oh, I remember that. Um, that. When we would leave, like, I, for whatever reason, in high school, I was, like, one of five kids that had a lunch period that was after the cafeteria was closed. It's like everything shut down. It's like we were, like, the, the reverse breakfast club where it's like, get the fuck out and find something to eat and then come back. So we used to go to Ponderosa a lot. And at a certain point, I figured, like, I can stick, like, one of those big gallon-sized plastic bags that you use to store food in the pocket of my leather jacket and fill it with chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that, and then I'd get, like, three meals out of one trip. To they call me the chicken wing bandit. Yeah. Exactly. They never found out they who I was. They didn't care. They had bigger things to I worry about. I did that about. in the dining hall at, at, uh, in college when I lived down in Athens at OU. They, you swiped into the dining hall, but you weren't supposed to take food out. But like, I don't eat that much when I eat meals. So what I would do, take like storage containers and like my messenger bag, like, yeah, just came back from (laughs) class. And then I'd I'd get food and then just sit in the corner and I would just dump it into the storage. I also didn't want to sit and eat my food in front of 200 other people. Did you ever get caught? No. That's I imagine awesome. you dumping it quietly like uh, the guy who fed his baby squirrel in Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> One that for was me. It. That was exactly like, you. That was exactly. But I would just take it up to my room because I lived in one of the the dorms that had a dining hall Attached. in it. So I just would take all of my food and sit in silence like I wanted <laughs> by myself and watch TV while I ate, not in front of 200 other people. Like I used to really enjoy buffets and even... I don't know, like even like the uh, like the Las Vegasy ones that are really like a lot of them. If you go to the right ones, are like super high end food. Like it's mm-hmm. just, it's it's just ridiculously uh, Roman and I should really just American in the amount of like waste that goes into it. Where it's yeah. just like, mm-hmm. look at here, you know. If they only but, have a four hour sit life before you legally have to throw it away. Yeah, I, I just um, even now I just don't care. I can't. I can't get excited about it anymore. I mean, and it's, like, it's I like, unfortunate. Um, I like um, Brazilian barbecues. I think yes. Like, like yeah. uh, brasa and shit like that. Like, I like that where it's like unlimited food, but it's still like relatively fresh. Yeah. Uh, they still have like a buffet style. The gentleman like, in the tight and pants the, and the swords. <laughs> Anything that's, that's served with a sword. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, for I'm sure. All right. in. Medieval times. Um, oh, I need to, I've never been to a medieval, medieval times. I'm no. sure it's terrible. I really want to go. Do you like to have sand and horse shit in your food? Of course. Well, then it's a place for you. Let's go. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm down. It's tricky. Um, no, I just, that's, uh, do old people still like, they must still like buffets. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's, less it's, of a, them. it's yeah. a, it's a bargain. Isn't there and a golden like, corral in, uh, in Parma, I think. In, still, or Brooklyn or something. Still hanging out. Yeah. Like hometown yeah. buffets closed like forever i think there's no more hometown buffets there's no more ponderosas there's I'm trying to think of what other ones there are golden corral still out there 
Then there's like, I mean, there's the old standbys of the the Chinese buffets. That's which, true. That's true. Which every yeah. once in a while, I'll Those go are to the one. Oh, I hate but Chinese buffets. There's, there's one particular one that's really bad. The one on 150th? Uh huh. I know. Oh, and that's yeah. the one that, like, once a year, Can I'll go to and be plate like. Plate of pudding. Got super. I ate there once, got super sick. I took like two bites of whatever the hell I put on my plate. And then I was like, and I'm going to go home and barf. They have frog legs. They'll do not anymore. Uh, not anymore. Not even on the weekend nights. I thought it was just a specialty. Oh, maybe on weekend nights. I don't. Salt weekend and pepper nights. frog. It was good. I I just uh, even that is it's the. They have one of the highest uh, health code violation counts in all of Cleveland. Oh, for sure. They're, they're always they're <laughs> on the looks leaderboard. It's like a place that has the yeah. highest health They had code like 50, like. 55 or 50 something in one year. But if you go Maybe in. that's why the food tastes so good. It, yeah, <laughs> if you, it's seasoned. There's something about it. Like, I have, mean, it's almost retro. Have you ever retro. looked at the architecture in there, $5. too? Because it's total like strip mall. Oh, yeah. You know, not a strip. Sure. But if you walk in. There's over the buffet tables is a great big blue dome. It's mm-hmm. gorgeous. It's, it's actually like a rotunda. really pretty in there, yeah. but the food is it's terrifying. Awful. But I'll I'll let you know. I'm I'll pro- go. I'm probably you let me know when you're visit. going. I'll go again. I'll give it a second oh, shot. Let's do a second mm-hmm. shot about Chinese buffets. I'm down. Fuck yeah! All right, that's a good idea. We're one step closer to becoming a food podcast. And I'm about <laughs> to break. Yes. Um, so have it have they take the professor to get him euthanized? <laughs> the um and I think I think I missed the line here. Um I just want to make sure it wasn't in my notes cuz it, it was really funny. <laughs> Go to hell, Heather. No, that was good. <laughs> that was a good one. I, I got that one down. It was um everybody thinks you're too old when mm-hmm. they're all kind of confronting him. We've all discussed it. But then Leela says something about we're not going to try and stop you until I finish this sentence. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> that was such a good misdirect. Like yeah. that, that line really worked out well. And the professor, when he was uh, getting ready to to fly the ship, he put on what is his driving thong. And yeah. then when they were carrying him out after oh, Leela said that, he goes, "My thong." I didn't catch that. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, what do, you, do you think it was made out of leather or suede? Well, like everything else he was wearing was made of leather. Or maybe uh-huh. tweed. Like old, like Indiana Jones jacket leather. Yeah, like, yeah. Just like really kind of almost suede at this point. Doesn't really move. Um. So they they take him to Bubbling Geezer, the spa, and uh, did have any of you ever been to a spa? No, no. That's why I'm so angry all the time. Sort of. Are you retaining a lot of grump? I certainly. Am. I so I watched like when I every time I've watched this episode and I watch that skin melt away. Yeah, it's really gross, but it looks really comfortable. Yeah, I wish yeah. my skin would like, melt off like that. I just want my, yeah, I just want my back to look like that. <laughs> yeah, just smooth out. I, I've never gone to a thing like that. I, I like I've never had a massage. I've never, ha- I mean, had like a pedicure or a manicure or anything. I have had. It's good on group. I've right had a now. massage. I've had one massage and I have had one pedicure. You did that sensory deprivation thing. Didn't I did you? that, yeah. which is kind of the same. It's kind of, but no one's like touching you. You just walk into a room where they put you in a in a tank, salty tank of is, water. Yeah, w- willingly oh. being grounded. Water. Yeah. Did you hallucinate? No. I saw some weird <clears throat> stuff, like your eyes. You know, when you you look at the sun on accident, and you get like that weird splotchy thing inside of your eye that, like, the yeah. retinal burn or whatever. You kind of see that when you're looking up in the darkness. You start seeing like lights that yeah, look kind of yeah. like stars, like swooshing past your your vision, just because your eyes can't see anything and they're trying to. I feel yeah. like my mind would just like reenact that episode of The Simpsons, <laughs> and I would just like start doing that. Um, it wasn't. It was. I don't know. Maybe it's because I can't keep my mind off of a million things at once. Mm-hmm. But I had a hard time kind of like relaxing and, and getting into that weird catatonic. Well, it's only an uh, hour too. It, like, yeah. I, I mean, think I feel like 45 minutes went by and I finally relaxed. And then 10 minutes after I was in like that nice, unaware, weird state. It, like the music came back on and it was like time to gently wake you up. You have five oh, minutes left. See, that's bullshit. Like they, yeah, because they, some people fall asleep in there and mm-hmm. some people don't turn off the lights because they're afraid of the dark or oh my god claustrophobic or whatever. But it's I wanted a sensory deprivation. Yeah, yeah. I, well, it's also like some people go in for th- like sports therapy or yeah, they have like, like injuries and they don't necessarily want the. They just want to feel better physically. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but it it kind of I'm not gonna lie it made me feel like a little bit like dopey for a couple days I felt like I couldn't like my brain wasn't working right it was a little bit I got a little unhinged. sign me up yeah. I got a little unhinged That's what and it was. I was like yeah women right? you know what else will do that <laughs> drugs just good old-fashioned drugs are you too good for drugs michelle i, I, the I don't know sensory deprivation yeah it was uh it was fun like i i think i have i got a free one because i i did some promotion so i have i have to go back but that was my experience in the tank unrelated to anything that we're talking about were there regarding this episode no there should have been i just i like i can't I literally can't relax. I don't know how to, and it scares me when, like, I get anxious about having too much to do, but if I have too little to do, I get just as anxious. So it's really a no-win yeah. situation. Just getting mad at yourself, like, why aren't you doing anything, you dumb piece of shit? Yeah, like, you're <laughs> wasting this free time that you could do anything with by, you know, and you're just whatever. playing Wolfenstein again. Well, like, you, they do give you the option. You can bring, like, uh, you can have your phone in the room with you and plug it into this little like area on the side of the room and it'll play your music through the tank speakers. Like yeah. you can hook up, but like, I don't know why you would want that. Like, yeah, like I don't you know said, if I want to listen the, to Napalm Death the, while I'm like, I mean, maybe if you had like a meditation app or something, yeah. I could get that, but it's still something where I'd want to listen to those binaural beats that are supposed to like just ASMR. Mess you up. <laughs> well, I heard, I heard my own heartbeat super loud. What if I just listen like to my own was... podcast? <laughs> <laughs> it just gets slowly more and more enraged. Just more. Dude, I hate this guy. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's bad. I I wish like I just I, I'd want to go to something like a like a hot spring. Or like a tar bath where the tar just blisters the age out of you. In which some scientists believe is a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a good that line. It was too. beautiful. Do you think so? Heather was like the young perky uh she looked like a Neptunian. Did she have she was four a Neptunian? Arms? She okay. was a Neptunian. So do you think she's an old Neptunian who has been euthicized? It's forever young. Yeah. Like, Probably. would you would you take advantage of that? It's like getting free insurance if you work at the hospital, or free Botox or something. Were you just kind of like, okay, yeah. like, and why not? Twenty years ago, or whenever this episode came out, like <laughs> we were still making fresh Botox jokes, yeah. and now you see commercials for it during your you know major network. I know a twenty five year old who just got Botox for the why? third time. Why? Oh, no. Why? What kind of body dysmorphia does that person have? It's uh, she's not in no reason does she have. To, to do it. Does she just like to have a numb face or something? I think it's like a matter of like the fear of uh, the future hmm. and kind of like preemptive. Oh my God. But I feel like if you keep doing it, your body's just going to like insist Reject on it. have it. Like, yeah. like you need it or else it's just going to drop down. I just, I like, now we're, we're, this is deconstructing or at least like getting into some giant sort of societal shit here anyway but like i've always wanted to just be kind of an old man because i've been like a 30 year old grump since i was about eight <laughs> whereas like i could see if you were sort of on the better looking side of things and mm -hmm. younger you'd be like fuck i don't want that to happen i'm just like i can't get yeah. gray hair fast enough and it's they won't come in yeah. <laughs> you know that's a weird thing especially with guys like we like we're more willing to get to our 50s and be our George Clooney's. Yeah. Where everyone else wants to be the, I don't know, Britney Spears. I'm making real timely references now. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, I mean, it's, it's I don't know, like, I, I, I've never understood it. I'm cool with being 20. I, I still think of myself as 21. I mean, maybe a little younger. When, when will I be, when will I become a silver fox or at least a less <laughs> disgusting Danny DeVito? When will that be me? <laughs> Like, just just where it's just, like, non-threatening, but everybody enjoys your company. In fairness, no one's as disgusting as Danny DeVito. I love him. I know. Troll That's, foot. I love how... <laughs> <laughs> if you have a toe knife, then we'll talk. Like, <laughs> As a matter of fact. Well, it's packed. I have to go out of town tomorrow. And it's... I mean, this all dovetails into the whole thing about these relax, relaxation places. It's like, I have to go for work to Myrtle Beach tomorrow. And everybody's like, oh, I want to go. I'm like, there's nothing about that destination that holds any sort Myrtle of Myrtle Beach is just a mall by the beach. Yes, with I, golf. Yeah. And like, uh, like, there's sand, which is bad in various places. There's, uh, 
you know, it's going to be like kind of too cold to swim outside. I'll still probably do it just to be that guy because everybody will be wearing like sweaters and ski parkas. I'll be out there like shirtless and trunks and I'm 60 from degree Cleveland. weather. Here's my stereotype. Yeah. This is beautiful. It's so warm Check outside. out this farmer's tan. And uh, yeah, like, there's probably, in fact, <laughs> the last time I went there, which was several years ago for this same conference actually, uh, I went to the Chinese buffet. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can do There's a lot of buffets recovering. out there. I went there once for when I was, uh, oh, I don't know, I was in high school. I had black hair and AFI shirts, so I was probably like, <laughs> for, um, like a sophomore maybe. And I was just like. Did you bring a parasol? <laughs> Oh, I wish if I, if I had a parasol at the time, I don't even know where, like, I think it was before we, I didn't have the internet in my house at least. Okay. I so like, I just bought a bunch of brand new CDs on the internet at the library. Uh, that's, that's how I uh, was doing my cool guy shopping. Um, no, but if I could find a parasol when I was a kid, I would have absolutely worn it. You know where you can buy a parasol now? Where? The Asian supermarket. Ooh, I could do that. <laughs> I should just get a parasol just to like, just fully I, embrace i do have a i have a photo like, of of myself somewhere like at school like at my high school with my parasol wearing like a death records t-shirt <laughs> like, see i didn't it, even listen to cool exists. music i didn't listen to the Bauhaus or like like joy division it was afi from first to last but like that's the, look you're like what 14 years old i mean like yeah. you don't know any better that's true then. It, it's it's fine but you always you have you have to go through the period where like you don't want anybody to know about it, and then you just own it, and it's fine. yeah. That's where I'm at now, and I still listen to it. You know, I had to go for a long time of kind of disavowing Guns and Roses, and now I'm not like a freak about Guns and Roses. But you know what I've noticed? Uh, a lot of ladies my age, when they're trying to look edgy, Guns and Roses T-shirts. Yeah, that's true. I, the, I, I, Guns and Roses shirts. Are Target like, sold a whole bunch of them. Yeah, <laughs> they're kind of the new Zeppelin shirts. Well, now Target yeah, has for sure. uh, or Pink Floyd. Target's yeah. been selling Prince shirts lately. And mm. they have. I saw the other day Bon Jovi shirts. So look out for yeah, that. But bon Jovi Metallica. Was never cool. There's a lot of Metallica stuff. At I bought a Star Target. Wars shirt there. Yeah. Officially oh, they licensed. have like 500 different Star Wars shirts. Yeah. I have a million. I, you know, and they're coming cool. up on a new movie. Yeah. It's fine. It's yeah. just, I actually, I probably saw more Guns N' Roses T-shirts at Riot Fest than I did any other. Well, they were like, there, right? No. 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 This is just like ladies of a certain age, which is my age, mm -hmm. which is old. Uh, but still, you know, functionally young, lots of Guns N' Roses t-shirts, yeah. and it was it was remarkable in that like it did seem out of place because well, it's, like, it's all cyclical. It all comes in waves. Yeah. Like it was like when I was in high school, middle school, everyone was into Zeppelin and, or Pink Floyd. Yeah, or, and now it's you know the '80s hair metal shit. Like I'm, I mean, no one's gonna wear a Motley Crue t-shirt. I can't wait for sure they will. Comes totally. back around uh, to like me. Uh, yeah, yeah? <laughs> I don't get it, man. Like like Backstreet Boys and and Sync. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, there's where, fucking main halls at the 90s like, dance party every three months. Like, yeah. I have no interest in ever listening to any of that music. And just, I was forced to listen to it as a kid, as a teenager. Spice Girls I, are getting I, back together. I just really? saw that story, too. Uh, right, on the Riot Fest news site. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> because they'll probably headline next I guess year. it is kind of pandering to, like, the 20-somethings. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's it. they're going to be the, the rehash. Yeah. And it, because like when, uh, Backstreet Boys got together like five years ago, it's like when you're old and you become young again, like the <laughs> professor. <laughs> He's 53 years old, which. Uh, that cuts his age by two thirds. It's pretty remarkable, and he's still. And he'll need a fake ID to rent ultra porn. How old do you have to be to rent ultra porn? I want to know what ultra what porn is. Me is. too. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, you want to know what it is, or you just want to know how old you have to be? No, I want to know one how old you have to be, and why. If it's you have to have an idea, what is it yeah. that it's well, so I've seen like, and done a lot of things that would be considered ultra, but not <laughs> <laughs> where I'd need a different ID for it. Well, for, just, it's probably German. Um, I would think it's just a point where you become so desensitized to everything that to like yeah. just get the bare. Well, I'm right uh, there, with, right there. Then already, yeah, so. you're there. I mean, but you have to wait another forty years or whatever. Let's just say Ugh. it's sixty. So he was still seven years shy. Yeah, so like a, it comes with his AARP card. Yeah. Well, you can get those at fifty-five. Don't ask me oh, how really? I know that. Um, Learn something new every day. I know. You just something to look forward to. Um, I didn't realize that, like everything else in life, pumping is just a primitive, degenerate form of bending. Oh, I did. Did you? Oh, yeah. Are, Makes sense. I mean. It's, it's angular of, bending. Kind of bending. It's well, I guess it, it depends on the kind of pump. Every but everything is a primitive form of bending was the the takeaway from that. That's what I got. It. I mean, yeah, I don't see why not. If you're pumping, 
well, pumping, but Bender says everything is a primitive form of okay. bending. Well, let's let's think of things. Uh, hanging a picture on the wall. You're bending the angle onto the <laughs> nail. Uh, attending a Chinese buffet. You're bending. You're the bending food your with legs your and your arms to put it onto your plate. <laughs> And then again to put it into your gullet. <laughs> and then bending your legs to sit. Um, and then to sit again to get it all out. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Ew. Bending your potty. muscles. <laughs> Gross. The evacuation. <laughs> um, so I guess this is where it really took the turn, though, is everybody falls into the tub. Mm-hmm. Because Bender pumps it and splashes everybody with. That's the, not even they the fall in the tub. The tar. ground, yeah, crumbles from it so them. hard that the ground crumbles, and everyone becomes like Vin Diesel a child. When he stomped on that <laughs> cement in Fast and the Furious Seven. Teen, <laughs> teen crew. I'm gonna let that go right over. Him and Jason head. Statham have a street fight. It's great. Oh, oh. dear. Was he? Uh, Ch- was it Chaz Chef Chelios? Is no, he Chef? was not. He, it would have been amazing if he was okay. Chef Chelios. Instead, he is just the, the guy, uh, the transporter. Deckard Shaw. Well, of course he was. He'll always be Turkish to me. <laughs> um, I, Zoidberg being a teenage heartthrob again, that just made my heart yes. sore. I like the teenage designs, or the, the, the kid designs, at least the first stage of all Before of them. Before it got weird? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when it got, like, the baby stuff, it was a little weird. Like, oh, I like I yeah. Teenage Bender. I even like the little Bender with the, the robot, like, uh, the cups. Uh, antenna ears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, his, that all got his, a little his, far out for His me. head antenna had, had the little whirly gig thing mm-hmm. with those hats. Is he... So, why did Bender get braces? Why not? <laughs> I, I don't knew think you were going to bring this up. Are they braces? Are they like... Yeah. Maybe they look like braces on his teeth well, I mean, a teen his, Bender. Are his teeth lights? You're coming from that from your cis white male privilege <laughs> is and there, not, not your robot. Is their mind reverted back to that age? I don't think uh, so. No, it didn't seem like it because the professor, from even until the the very end, he maintains like he knows what he's doing. He knows that yeah, he just the talks situation. Like, he says thanks for so helping. We will. Helping oh, don't Wheela. don't. Okay, can you edit that out? Or, I I could or do more baby talk. Or I'm really into baby talk on my oh, podcast. Oh fuck no, don't. It's the worst. Shall we, Pete? Oh God. Oh no, I'm on the Futurama podcast. <laughs> 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 I can't even like bang my head against the mic because the foam is stuck. George, remember that friend of the podcast thing? <laughs> you're done. Are you you're saying I'm not walking, a friend? You're <laughs> walking a thin edge on that. <laughs> the, uh, Hermes got the most bitchin like high top. Yeah, yeah. It was so back cool. It, it really like like all of their touchstones seem to go full nineties at that point. Yeah, he well, was like total eighty. Oh yeah, I guess it's nineties too. Yeah, he like Will Smith. So like the the way that the professor. What do you say? Regressed, de-aged. Yeah. It was like um, <coughs> there 70s. was a seventy. Yeah, there was like your your Afro professor, and then there was like the long-haired professor. Smell like smoking and, and drinking. Yeah. <laughs> and a few beers, but, like, but I'm okay to The way drive. that he progressed, though, was like um, like if it had happened when the episode aired, and he was going backward from there. Like yeah. it was, it, it was like the timeline. Yeah, well, it's like Captain Yesterday when they became superheroes. Fry turned into like a disco godfather. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but that Uh, makes a little bit more sense for Fry. But in terms of like, it just seemed like they were too lazy to create like past culture Mm -hmm. for their time. Well, the only part of Bender's de-aging process is the... Floppy disk at the end, yeah. Like the box, but he was, yeah. He was made, I guess, maybe the box, but probably not even that, just the blueprint Mm -hmm. because he was built. Yeah, that just seemed it was also uh, weird watching them in like little fetuses and these like weird like sacks, yeah, whatever. Like, it it definitely got super strange. I mean, do do we take away from this that Amy has a fat girl complex because like that's never been fat, but that was never part of the. (laughs) The storyline before was I think it? It was. It was. They've mentioned it. Her Have parents, they? yeah. Okay. Like, or, she would always say she got cute. Yeah. Like Leo and Inez, and and that like totally that tracked for them for sure. Where yeah. Leo just starts in on like the really awful. <laughs> If I'm you sit if you, in my room. Oh, you're so fat. You're not going to sit in your room. You're going to sit around the room. I, can I love Billy West's like horrible, horribly racist yeah. voice? There's something about it's, it that's just so like endearing to me. I don't know what it is. It's problematic, though, right? Oh, it's like, incredibly just, problematic. Just like Toby Huss doing um, 
Khan on King of the Hill. Yeah, or 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 Hank Azaria doing a poo or any of that. Like, right, but it's always Lauren Tom. Huh. Fun yeah. fact, though, uh, isn't Tress McNeil also on King of the Hill as Min? Or was no? Was I, th- it that I does? think Lauren Tom Lauren, is that's who Min. Is. That's, that is, that's yeah. who I meant. Yeah, Lauren. But she's Tom. like it's like they can find well they can find one Asian voice actress. <laughs> That's they've got that nailed. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the other ones. But like, I like I, was she was she Mulan? I don't think so. No. What's oh? Uh, what's the other? Is another uh, Asian actress? Is it is it Ming Na? I think. I mean, it's like it's always one of those two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's just like okay, Basically, and that's fine. None. But like. There's, you know, you can't get Ken Jong to do whatever, or and it's not I mean, like I'm not trying to crusade on it. What I just about think Jet it's Lee? interesting. Can we get Jet Li to do <laughs> that something? That would be great. He's because he's Jackie Chan. That, he's got uh, <laughs> Jet Li's got like such a high wishy washy voice because it's all like Mandarin accented. Yeah. It's very like it, when you hear his real undubbed uh, voice, it's like very uncongruent, mm-hmm. incongruent, incongruent from his. Persona because we're applying our Lee movie forever. He probably retired because he, he got the shit beaten out of him for a living. Yeah, I'm gonna watch Hero again. That's a good movie. I think that's. Uh, I mean, when was the last time Jackie Chan made a movie? Probably this year. But yeah, it was. It was the guy who know. did Casino Royale. It's called The Foreigner. It's supposed to be really good. <laughs> yeah, Pete. <laughs> Is it about Fucking a jukebox idiot. hero? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also did the Lego movie, the Ninjago Lego movie. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'll, I should go look it up. He always. When are we gonna get uh, Jackie Chan's legacy ruined? Because well, he's did, been he's been he making did Jackie Chan scared stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I can't wait. It's for a Jackie remake. Chan goes to camp. <laughs> of, of Dial M for murder. <laughs> I almost made the joke of him remaking the Karate Kid, but he already did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that's right. With a Smith. Mm-hmm. Jaden Smith's Christmas present. It's literally a Christmas present to him. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, like, it's great. It's great for the Smith family, but come the fuck on. Yeah. Um, I, so, yeah, I think, but going back to the question of whether they retain their knowledge and wisdom of being older, like, that would kind of be the yeah. best case scenario. Like, like when they got hurled back in time. Yeah. But that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got real upset about that. <laughs> but, but Leela being like, no, I'm going to relive my childhood. Like, if you could relive your childhood, but with your adult knowledge, like yeah, be great, I, be I, it'd still be pretty terrible. I wouldn't. No, no, no. Certain no certain point. things. I don't want to go through puberty again. Like, I don't know. I'd be all for it. I'd probably, probably, I think far. I think I'd I would do pro- much better if I had pro- a second time around. I think I would <laughs> yeah. do worse, and I'd probably like end up in jail or We'd something also have like to, that. Like, be able to deal with today's modern culture. I don't get Taylor Swift. I don't get like. Dubstep. Oh yeah, like, I'm. Th- uh, yeah, because y- I was thinking like if I went back to the time like, oh, where yeah, I yeah. was that age, I would probably be able to do it again. I, but yeah, I don't. I don't understand kids these yeah, days. You're not going know. back in time. <laughs> I mean, look, yeah. it's, it's Welcome basically to the cartoon podcast. <laughs> it's basically one Freaky Friday scenario away from happening to any of us. Could, and I the thing is, by the end of any of those movies, like you know, they'll time lapse it, so it might be a couple of weeks, it might be a month, but you can assimilate. Start to adjust. Yeah. yeah. I mean, let's. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Roy Moore would clean up, really, in an appropriate way. Really, <laughs> like really? of all the things that's happened the last two weeks, like I just, <laughs> just you know, if he was an actual fourteen-year-old tr- dating in quotes fourteen-year-olds, it wouldn't have been a problem, would it, Roy? But you're a pederast. <laughs> so none of us are going to say anything to this, right? We're just going <laughs> to let, ha- let him keep talking. No, I just, I like. <laughs> I'm it's gonna know now. <laughs> I was he's, watching Tom he's, make his forty eight minutes in. No. He's just gonna <laughs> well, and we're gonna come back on this laughing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I just what I was getting at with Jackie Chan is like when is the point gonna happen where yet another hero just becomes Jackie Chan fallible. seems like a genuinely good guy though. It's so do a lot of people. Who knows? That's true. People are fucked up and all this stuff is happening. Everyone and it, you've ever and, heard of is a sex. And also <laughs> yes. okay, right now it's celebrities. What about like just another Local person? Local celebrities. Or just like it happens all the time and like fuck them all. Yeah. 
That's where I'm at. Yeah, people are finally. Uh, it's this is not new. No, Women no. have been saying this for years, yes. but no one gives a shit or listens except now. It someone is finally listening, and everyone's but, finally know, coming out and saying like, "Oh yeah, well this guy also, yeah, and this guy, and I this is going to be." I have a, a theory lot of that guys. it's not not demeaning it in any way, but I have a theory that it was like a planned thing to start doing this, and somebody got it rolling, and then like, what do you mean? Like just like, like okay, a distraction so from like MAGA? this was all known knowledge, and they started gathering all this information. Well, it was kind of, and the then, New York Times like, kind of did that, I right? Mean, like. Yeah. Everyone knew about Louis C.K. two years ago. Like, everyone knew about Harvey Weinstein for 25, 30 years. Yeah. Right. Like, it's just information's coming out. You know, Cosby kind of started the. I'm sorry the ball to take rolling. it down this road, but I That's liked fine. it better when we were talking about Chinese buffets. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> it just everyone's a monster and yeah. I quit comedy. This is not this is not the platform <laughs> to be discussing this. No, but when the stories about Big Chuck and Little John come out, I'm just gonna go jump off a bridge. That's... Oh god, Little John anyone doing anything with Little John. So uh <laughs> what do you think Suervo Gold tequila tastes like? Garbage. You Probably think? great through a silly straw. You think do, do silly straws make things taste better? <laughs> yes, they do. Okay. I don't like tequila though. So. I love tequila. Tequila's my favorite. Tequila is your lady. Mm-hmm. No. Do you ever do the dance to the song? Is that a song? Do oh, you, or do you tequila. have to put the song oh, on? Oh, that song. Do, 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 do. Oh, I was I was making a Cabin in the Woods reference. I don't know. <laughs> well, how so? You don't remember, have you seen Cabin in the Woods? I have, but several years ago. When he's he's having a big monologue about the loss of life, and it's really terrible and awful, and he gets really distressed. Tequila is my lady, and they start dancing and partying. Oh, uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. That I. Maybe I remember that. It's a great I was movie. Probably drunk. I <laughs> <laughs> might have had some tequila. Um, but so like, I I like teenage Leela going just sort of native with her parents. Like that was a nice little B story. I would have watched that whole episode. Yeah, you're the boss. I would have much no, I'm not. That. <laughs> I loved his dad jokes and yeah. him laughing at his own jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, that and then, adorable. like, this is, I think, the first time, other than him being naked, we've seen Fry in clothing other than, like, his red jacket and jeans when he shows up in, like, a suit mm-hmm. to pick her up and take her out with flowers. And, Hi. <laughs> it's the voice crack. Um, Billy West does a them. really good job of... Everything? Of all... Yes, but just doing all his characters in at different ages and tweaking them slightly. I, I mean, Billy West is amazing. And like, I, I have such an admiration for like voice actors who can do a voice inside of a voice. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that is so, it's hard enough to do a voice. Yes. Like, but let alone doing like, I'm doing a voice of fry as a teenager. Yeah. Cracking his voice and then trying to deepen his voice to sound older. Right, <laughs> like it's so weird and, and it's still so not amazing, hit, and still yeah. not hit yeah. just the baseline. Like, yeah. Whereas you have Phil Hartman who just does the same voice and he still like sounds amazing. Or when a voice actor does an impression of another another character in their yeah. character, <laughs> yeah, like that's that shit's hard. Man. It, oh, like, yeah. I can't do that. No. no, I can just do the 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 cave from Aladdin. That's all I can do. <laughs> so, like, Have you and Devin ever switched and done each other on the show? We basically sound the same. I know, but have you ever done it on purpose? Uh, I'm, I'm de- no, it's not Devin. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, hey, guys. I'm de- no, what if I, I can't do it. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Devin Newson. <laughs> like, I'm Froggier. That's the only difference. Like, yeah. it's. I mean, it's just it's an interesting thought. We could do that sometime. Right, Tom? Do what? Say where you go as Just, each other. We could we could do imitations. <laughs> go out, of each go other. out with each oh. other. Who wants to be me? <laughs> you guys want to go see Thor together? <laughs> go on a date. <laughs> well, we could all switch around. Like you could be me, <laughs> and I could be you. <laughs> I'm and Michelle then Tom too. could be me, being you, being me. <laughs> and I'm still George. Yeah. Well, you know, you you get off easy. You're the guest. Um, yeah, I get off easy. The. <laughs> <laughs> the whole drive-in thing at Stenchy's with the the burgers, no rat feces. Sewer burger, no rat feces because he's diet? on a diet. Like, other than Sonic, have you ever – well, there's Swenson's up here. But have you ever gone to, like – Yeah, Swenson's and Sonic. That's it. That's it. Just, like, I, that's all that exists. Why was it such a big deal to just sit in your car and eat? I mean, it's like a drive-in movie. It was very Americana. Yeah. I mean, it's a very American. Gra- it's obviously ripping off American graffiti. Sure. Right. Um, 
But I mean, it's it's the same appeal as going to a drive-in theater. There's no real reason for it. It's just like the 50s and 60s were just kind of very car obsessed. I think uh, Mandy and Moose, the couple that that come up to Leela and Fry, they're supposed to be like a another couple that was in the Archie comics. Yeah. Okay. Moose and whatever mm. Moose's girlfriend's name was. It wasn't Mandy, but Moose is the same. Except he's got <laughs> Moose <Yeah. laughs> antlers on his head. The whole sewer chase was fun. I like the fact that they had, um, they were timed. He's like, no, it's nine thirty and whatever, and yeah. like they knew that the the professor Dan's was going to be predictable taking this thing. colon. Yeah, the, having being regular is it's a blessing. I'm just it's really something. <laughs> I'm to, just asking for a solid to strive solid for. Oh, gee. I mean, like, but if you can time it, even if it's not, I mean, like having uncontrollable diarrhea is awful all around. Yeah. But if you know when you're going to have the uncontrollable diarrhea, you can plan around it. Yeah. Just a thought. I'm I mean, getting to a point where like I sharted for the first time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, wait, not, not, not here, not here just now. Oh, sure. no, I, uh, and I'm just like, Oh, so this is the point in my life I'm at. So like I'm losing control of my body. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's all downhill from here, buddy. This is a terrible thought to have, George. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my brain. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, the Todd Berry looking alien makes an our mutant makes another appearance. Yeah. You say the, Todd Berry a lot. I don't I, I mean I get it because he's balding. But there's, other there is that, something like, about that mutant that is entirely reminiscent of Todd Berry. I think yeah. it's it's less about the prominent forehead and more about the facial expression. I guess. And he's kind of he's kind of slouching. Yeah. It, and it, uh, was it a uh, um, Martin Luther Thing Junior High School? Yes. Middle school. <laughs> Middle school. Yeah. Uh, I think it was no, it was high school. It was, high was school. it? Yeah, thought, Martin Luther <sighs> Thing Junior High School. Uh, like they, they drove by the theater and it, they were playing Fiddler Below the Roof. Yes. <laughs> so it's crap. <laughs> four th- four stars. It's crap. Was that offensive, Martin Luther Thing Junior? I think it's. I think it's just a, a joke line. about a mutant. It's a dad pun. Yeah. I, well, like, even before the, the whole sewer race thing, I loved how Lilo was saying, like, this is my friend Fry from the surface. And then they say something like... Um, it must be the most Oh, yeah, guy. the most uninteresting and unpopular guy on the surface to have to hang out with you. And then he goes, they're on to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's... Uh, uh, poor Fry. Poor Lilo. Well, Leela seems pretty happy where she is. Well, yeah, because she's got the wisdom and knowledge to know that she's just basically play acting through it. Like, yeah. like that's the whole thing. If you could go back and you're just like, okay, I'm getting bullied, but these people yeah. are shitheads. And Force a smile till it becomes real. Yeah. yeah. Delusion, it's called. That's why I would have rather watched more of that. I would have rather watch her choose to... Would choose to grow up again. So as a and not just like, oh, I gotta Leela? save my friends. Teenage Leela would be your spinoff. Uh, just an episode of it instead of the instead of what we got for the second half of this episode. I I literally stopped taking notes after this scene because really? there what there wasn't much interesting after that. Like with the oil eating bacterium. Yeah, just art. When, when they when they when they say the RNA stuff, I'm like, okay, so obviously Bender should have never de-aged at yeah. all. Like I think it also would have been probably more interesting if he didn't. Him, his uh, dynamic of old Bender with teenage that, fry yeah, or baby, baby, yeah, fry babies. Yeah, I think that would have been far more. <laughs> him just being like so, like having him be the adult instead of Leela, would have been way more interesting and funny, honestly. Because he, well, he, I mean, we've seen that happen when he adopted all the orphans. In a sense, yeah, but you I know, mean, but, like he has a, a more, uh, more of a connection with these people. Yeah, so he could really exploit them. Yeah. Um, or he just disappears for half the episode. Yeah, <laughs> which he kind of does anyway. <laughs> right. There was right. there was the line where <laughs> this is so it's like such a, a premonition of the future. My life wasn't as glamorous as my web page made it look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is from like two thousand two, right? Uh, three maybe now. Yeah, but I think that like, was the year I took an HTML yeah. class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but like that's the whole thing. I mean that's all. We Facebook all had MySpace. Yeah, it's yeah. just just like masking your misery by making it look like you're doing fabulous things. Yeah, well, like Fry's, a podcast. Fry says, uh, "I'll come, I'll come <laughs> exactly. visit you when I grow up," and she says. Bring beer. And uh, Morris goes, no beer till you finish your tequila. 
That's, that was good. So they, they all go into the uh, bacterial spew chamber. Well, just like an angry dome, I would like to have a bacterial <laughs> spew chamber yes. in my well, house. It, 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 it is a spew chamber because the machine is actually just like just the coughing. voice of a guy going, <laughs> and Zoidberg says, I'm no doctor, but this machine guy could use a lozenge. <laughs> <laughs> So, like this was a couple good lines back to back. So do you think the do you think the reason that it got screwed up is because the professor messed it up, or he or just nobody understands chronotons? I think it's a mixture of both. You think, I think in the same way, like uh, well, I guess he kind of understands all the chronotons in the uh, uh, Harlem Globetrotters episode, but I think it's uh, 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 sugar. What's his name? Sugar hand or sugar? Ethan bubblegum tape. Bubblegum tape. Sugar <laughs> sugar gum taint. Um, uh, he he seems to know more about cryotons than than the professor does. So I guess that kind of. But he's been in like seven episodes this season. So why don't they just go back? He to also him? wasn't sure if it was actually going to work. Okay. He's like you know he's just like they yeah. just might. And might they'll stop eat. the aging you know de aging process or whatever. But actually it's cemented up. So uh, be- by becoming younger, the professor's chest bush was pretty yeah. insane. And he had like a gold a medallion. Man. Yeah, well, he went full like welcome back. I love how their clothes car. change as they yeah. de-age too. Yeah. yeah. It's all like, it's all very, well, I feel like if he was wearing leather, like... his clothes would have de-aged back into a cow. <laughs> Because he's That's wearing leather point. through half of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like when he turned back into like the hippy dippy professor. Mm-hmm. Like, just wearing that vest. Yeah, mm-hmm. you would think that that would, I mean, for sure. But that, that whole thing where he's just like, um, Zoidberg changing in to all of the different sea forms gross. is very gross and mm-hmm. disturbing. Um, yeah, and it creates that fake out at the end, which is a bit much. Yeah, I just, the <sighs> I did like the reference to the four-legged chachi or the ten-legged yeah. chachi. Did you see the poster on Leela's wall? No. She had a, a poster of four-legged chachi and tentacle chachi, like, <laughs> on her wall. <laughs> like, uh, are any of you old enough to remember chachi as a thing? I know Joni loves chachi as a mm-hmm. reference, but that's okay. I'm, I'm He was on um, well, Joni, Happy Days, right? Yeah, Joni Happy was, was yeah. the little sister on Happy Days. She's and Joni chachi Cunningham. Was, wasn't chachi, like, related to Fonzie? He was, yeah. he was like, Fonzie's kind of. cousin. Yeah. yeah. I've watched a little bit of Happy Days, but not like enough to know anything. And about now it. he's ridiculous. What happened to is that um, Scott Baio? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he went yeah, from that. Him. What happened to Richie's brother that never came downstairs? He died in Vietnam. He was a real <laughs> Armin Tanzarian kind of. Situation. He he. Didn't they do a, that on a guy? Too? A guy named yeah. uh, what was it? Richie Whitman. Stole his identity and became an ad exec named Don Draper. I think he's more of a Roy. Dick Whitman. Yeah. It was all very strange. I mean, like, if there's one person who doesn't give a fuck about continuity, it's Gary Marshall. That's true. So, mm-hmm. you know, that stuff was all up in the air. The only thing anyway. he's continuity, he, he's obsessed with continuity is the fact that he's dead. Yes. And even then, he'll that probably show up with another holiday. He'll come back with a holiday themed movie true. posthumously. He did four of them. From the mind of Gary Marshall. And it'll, you know, like Arbor Day, and it'll be. <laughs> Paul just... Tompkins did that once. Oh, because he he did Gary Marshall as a character on Comedy Bang Bang for a while. Oh yeah, yeah. That's well right. there's, I, I uh, the Paul F. Th- the Pod F. Tomcast had a whole running bit great. about the the great undiscovered project. Yeah, <laughs> and, Where, was it? As Ice T was obsessed with dredges. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, John John C. Riley. John C. Riley only ate dredges, and yeah. it ruined his teeth. <laughs> they call me Gary. <laughs> um, they, uh, there was also an episode of Doug Loves Movies once where Paul F. Tompkins was the only guest, but Paul he, S. Tompkins, pa- yeah, this, 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 this shit. <laughs> Paul F. Pork Grinds. Paul F. Tompkins was the only guest, but he competed against himself as himself, Werner Herzog, and Gary Marshall. <laughs> he is so fucking funny, man. I love him so much. It was beautiful. Um. Yeah, and then I mean, I think other than uh, Arrested Development, there's Scott Bayo has done nothing to speak of. Oh man, uh, Bob Blah Blah's Law Blog. Yeah, I love Bob Blah Blah. blah, blah. Just oh, he's awful. <laughs> yeah, I, but yeah, we're that was funny. Were we aware that the Tooth Fairy was the head of the FBI? Has a Tooth Fairy appeared before? I can't no. remember. No. I don't remember. No, I don't. She never. So. But like, like the Tooth Fairy being thought of as it's a, a he. I'm sorry. 
I've seen the Rock movie. I know. No, I mean because <laughs> they said he <laughs> oh, is. They? Uh, the head of the FBI. Or the sequel, Tooth Fairy, with uh, Larry the Cable Guy. Well, they yeah. thought it was just a myth, and it turns out the Fountain of Aging is real, which I would have loved to have found that when I was like eight. So, by that same token, if you, you know, they're reversing an age, but retaining Are you talking about a big thing. scenario here? Well, kind of. I guess that's exactly what it is, isn't it? If you were young and jumped into the Fountain of Aging and got out before you withered and turned into a... You if wouldn't have any knowledge. You would be. You would a, just be an eight-year-old with the mind of an like eight, like a mm-hmm. thirty-year-old body. Tom Hanks and Big. Yeah. Okay. So when I was eight, I would top. definitely want to. Like great. I watched Big all the time. What was your favorite <laughs> part of Big? Uh, the scene where they were bouncing on the the bounce the trampoline. Okay. And he had like I think it was whipped cream or cheese whiz or something, and he was just like they're just spraying it at each other and shoving it up their mouths and stuff. Oh, I loved it. I loved yeah. that whole the whole apartment was amazing. Yeah, it was like a real Silver Spoons thing, but without Ricky Schroeder ruining it. <laughs> Failing your way up. Yeah. Just like I, the real world. Do you... It seems like there's just not nearly enough aerosol food anymore. Like, it was a thing for a while that was really great. This is yeah, making me really want some squeeze cheese. Yeah. I I'm sure really I hate squeeze a... cheese. I don't know if I've ever had it. Do you sell any uh, aerosol food at the place you work at, George? Yeah, we're really big on uh, destroying the environment. <laughs> <laughs> so... Now that Bezos is involved, just, just <laughs> I just on. throw food on the ground, just stomp on it. Spray, but not even not spray even can ham. You just <sighs> spray I mean, ham. I mean, in, in a certain I spray mean, ham. Spray ham. You know, if you get into like the uh, the the oh, shit like the Ferran Adria um, or the Wiley Dufresne kind of gastro. Uh, molecular gastronomy. None movement. of those words you just are you said are real about? words. I don't, know, I don't know if they're too smart or too old. Like, <laughs> well, like, like, you've got to know what I'm talking about, right, Michelle? Borderline. Okay. So, like, <laughs> um, I think I think I'm doing this right. Ferran Adria was a chef. Who that had is a, the name that I do know. Oh, I okay. didn't know the other is one. Like that, that science you cooking? Yes. yes. So yeah, he yeah, had yeah, a restaurant yeah. called El Bulli. In Spain, where uh, he basically pioneered the whole thing of like, we're going to turn this into foam or we're going to like mm-hmm. transform an egg into a nine foot tower somehow on your plate and it's still delicious and whatever. But like, that's as close as you get. Like, a lot of that, they got crazy with the foams and things. So you could have like a foamed ham somehow. Like, they'd, they'd take like nuclear teeth and turn it into a paste and then they'd like <laughs> aerosolize it so it would turn into a thing. Like, and it's it sort of like jumped the shark at this point where I think it was this really interesting movement that's sort of had its time and passed now and it informs things that happen now again science is so too much far. talk about now food. it's reserved mm-hmm. to everyone just wants a tommy pill. literally wrote down no, food it, talk yeah <laughs> everyone everyone just wants to have fried macaroni and cheese bites and i get that yeah because they're fucking delicious i know i still make them at work even though you're not supposed to are they like uh, we're not supposed to we're just definitely bites. not putting it on the menu but i could do it so if i came in our mac and cheese isn't very good though so. oh well then fuck that yeah huh? You could like grind up some sausage and throw it in there, though. Yeah, I do. I do chicken mac every once in a while. It's delicious. Mm. Oh, see, that's good. So I, I just, um, I, how did we turn into aerosol food? Because you're talking about big. That's yeah, why the, the, fountain, the of fountain of aging. aging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, where have has Teddy Bear Junction come up before as the worst scum hole in the galaxy? Nope. Mm-hmm. No. Because I feel like that was a thing too. Is it just a name, or no, is there something you're thinking to do with of Teddy Hobo Bears? Junction? Maybe that's it. Is that where Bender lives in uh, the thirty percent? I believe so, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, it must be a Ken uh, Wheeler thing. No, is it Ken Wheeler? Keeler. Is it Keeler or Wheeler? I think it's Keeler. Oh, Jeff Westbrook is who wrote this. Yeah, w- which is the same writer, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of thirty percent Iron Chef. He's, are you thinking of Ken Keeler, the director? Is that? Yeah, he, he's, he's not the director writer. of this episode, but he's no. a director of. Futurama and The Simpsons. Yes. I like that we can talk yes. about boring things that are related to the show as well as other boring things that are not. <laughs> Welcome to everything I have to say. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that Hobo Junction was in 30% Iron Chef. So Teddy Bear Written Junction. by Jeff Westbrook. And this has mm-hmm. Teddy Bear Junction in it. So apparently Jeff Westbrook just, just has those a, junctions. He's got a junction fixation. <laughs> I'm not That's junction fixation. Junction fixation. He doesn't use any conjunctions. I, nice. I just. Uh, What's your function? Which uh, one? Bending. Conjunction, junction, bending. 
What's everything is, everything is bending. Apparently, we established that like forty minutes ago. Um, I was glad to see Norman Zoidberg come and go as quickly as he did. Yeah. The uh, the splitting off spore thing is. I always wanted to be the center of attention. <laughs> oh, that was the only funny part of it. Like yeah. the rest of it was just like <laughs> let him go. Oh, just... and there's like no empathy for having his brother killed. Even though well, there's like a dozen enough. of them. You can yeah. lose and one. And Zoidberg points out this is the part of his life cycle that that actually happened. Yeah, he's already? been through it already. Yeah. <laughs> so then it it creates time. like a singularity or something where there's Well, yeah, like, what about the other ones? Yeah. One of them had to split off. If one did, then probably another one did. Or are so they all just different Zoidberg sentient polyps on and his grossness? Well, he reserted, uh, he de-aged even farther back before he went into the... Okay, but even um, okay. Well, then, what happened to those souls that existed? They never those, were around. There's no such thing, George. But I mean, if they existed at one point, they it's exist. All made up. It's like source code. Hmm. If they're sentient at one point, that means they're sentient. They exist. This sounds maybe like maybe this sounds on, like some Kang the Conqueror. Maybe they're bullshit. still on his home planet. Oh, of course. But what about those ones that are right there? If they revert back to a younger age and then he goes back to that age again when no, he's they would have probably popped off. Even yeah, if they, even okay, if they, okay, okay, no, even no, if no, they no, didn't no. pop off. Even or, if they didn't pop off and he aged into another if he aged back into Zoidberg, those things still existed at some point. Right. Yes, yes, you know? okay. No. It just makes me think of that Trisk. After the whatever after it is. the yeah. holes, fount- going yeah. into the fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. Japanese talking. girls' yeah. knees. Yeah, I agree with you. That absorbs their souls and he becomes like twelve different people. I would have loved to have had Zoidberg have like multiple personality disorder after this. Like, <laughs> the uh, the baby talk professor is horrible, and we we talked about this a little bit about earlier. Me? Oh, why you say that? I you know my daughter uh, will talk in baby talk. And I literally have to correct her every day. How old is she? She's eight. So okay, she, yeah. she knows how to talk. Yeah. I mean, she fucking knows how to swear like a pro. But every <laughs> once in a while, she's just like like once a day, just me not know. I'm like, no, no, no. No, it's like that no baby of, talk. Me no understand why you upset. Say fuck as many times as you want, but do not talk like a baby in my house. <laughs> it's terrifying and awful. She needs to start talking like Kevin does in that one episode of The Office where he tries <laughs> to save time. <laughs> <laughs> we should all try and be more like Kevin in general. No. I think. Are you saying no as a no or as in you sea know? Sea World. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to Sea World? <laughs> <laughs> what I, Ocean, what I, so the, fish, the one thing, jumping. One thing I didn't understand when the professor got sucked up in the current, or when that was an issue, mm-hmm. why couldn't Bender just extendo his arms and pull him back in? Like he's demonstrated his Inspector Gadget ability going, before. I don't think it was just they were going around in that circle. No, they, they were already they were out in. at that point. Oh, were they? Yeah. yeah, they were out, and then the, the professor, professor was in. Oh, when he was still stuck in there. Nobody realized that Leela didn't save the him. professor. Yeah. Except for says, all with, of the audience. With my final breaths, I curse Noidberg. <laughs> <laughs> but then Pazuzu comes, and Pazuzu saves the professor. and uh, Which is hiding under the, sh- the ship's wing. For some reason. Yeah. yeah he's just hanging out. He's just being an asshole. It's Pazuzu. <laughs> so, um, bon way. <laughs> Heather Heather comes and scans the the professor and he's actually older than he was before the whole ordeal started. I do like that he enjoys being and older. And he's he's happy about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, like he's, it was uh, you know, it's great. Getting older is great. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah maybe not. When Leela's like I might be a couple years younger, Amy's like, yeah, yeah, me, me too. too. Wink. <laughs> I get I get to take high blood pressure medication. Just be generally grumpy. Can't wait to take more pills and it's, be more sore. It's great. I just know, and like now I can actually. Yeah, your, tell grump, when it your grumpiness working. is like slightly justified. Now, it's now, it, yeah, it all it all evens out. Um, so that switcheroo at the end with Pazuzu and his I love son it. is one of the the best part of the whole episode. Probably one of my favorite ways really to end an episode because it's so weird it yeah weird. but disagree like floating, no floating um, uh, Eiffel no dice tower. yeah and yeah it's, it's very it one. seems like i don't know how do we end this <laughs> that is like, how papa gain his freedom i mean i almost feel Bali. like that's how they they just reverse engineered it from that scene it feels like the whole Pazuzu thing was entirely tacked on because yeah. they just didn't know what to do bon is, is 
Well, bon oui just means good, yes? It's good night. Right? Good night. Is it? Mm-hmm. But I bon thought- oui. Bon oui. You're right, but we oui is yes. N U I T. Oh, bon oh, nuit. okay. It's one nuit. Okay. Nuit. I thought he was just saying like bon oui. Oui. No. Bon oui. So th- he's slurring bon the oui. n like bon a dirty bon French oui. gargoyle oh. would. I took one year of French in high school. I remember none of it. Why would you? Yeah. This Croissant. Is Ooh, that's good. Crepe. <laughs> it's like a pancake, but what? thinner. Oh, a crap. Crap. A crap. <laughs> crap. Crap. I thought you meant a croissant was like a, uh, a pancake, and you'd croissant. horribly mistaken. A croissant's like a fluffy pancake made of flour <laughs> <laughs> and butter. <laughs> and, and French love. <laughs> uh, French apathy. I, I mean, we, if there's one thing the French are not apathetic about, it's pastries. That's true. I mean, like that's the, that's where all of it gets invested, and everything else can go eat it. I think I just loved Pazuzu. Pazuzu is P- cute. Does Pazuzu? I ever wish come I had my adorable. own Pazuzu. I want my own Pazuzu, and I want my own little baby Pazuzu. And yeah. then a baby's baby's Pazuzu. <laughs> well, does Pazuzu ever come back? No, no. Not that I'm aware well, of. actually, yes, yes, he does. He is in uh, Beast with a Billion Backs or whatever in that the movie? Really? In the movie is. Yeah, huh. that's a, probably the worst one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But Pazuzu's in it. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't want. I don't want to give any spoilers. With the, but the Beanstalk, or is that the other one? Uh, There's four. No. Of them, Beast right? with a Billion well, no. Backs has is the uh, one that had David Cross, Cross one. Because hmm. Bender's Game and Bender's Big Score are the, the best ones, but Bender's Big Score is the only legit good one. But see. It sounds like you have some opinions about those, George. Wild Green Yonder. That's we, one of them. We that probably that ought to figure out some way to do a crossover huh. event between I'm, the different podcasts. I'm always down to talk about we Bender's Big Score. The, I genuinely love the, Bender's uh, Big Score. Oh, what if we did it like a asshole comic book company and we just, like, you and Devin, I shouldn't be saying this on my No, let's talk about we'll it talk later. All right, yeah. I, oh, I, my I God. got a few <laughs> ideas, so. Edit that out, Tom, but I just, wow, inspiration. Like lightning from the sky. You can roll a D10 later. <laughs> Zeus just shot me in the ass <laughs> in a shower of gold. Um, well, we made it to the end. I kind of liked when we were talking about Chinese buffets and whatnot better than a lot talk of this about episode. Chinese buffets. Um, yeah, I've been. I'm programming your show for the well, next I mean, couple months. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next couple of months we're doing Star Wars, or the next couple of weeks at least. So, uh, yeah. is there some? What's going on with Star Wars? The new one. I'm, oh, more, I'm more excited for the new Star Wars than I am for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Same here. Combined, like, I'm not even doing. I Thanksgiving don't. I'm this not year. looking I'm for. I don't want. Uh, I just. I'm. I'm so excited for Star Wars. I already Wars. got my ticket. It's, I'm fucking excited. Me too. Not I, you, I bought the the thirty dollar fucking fan oh, experience. Double, the I'm double, not doing feature. A double feature. I'm just doing the IMAX. Well, I had uh, Stubbs the AMC mm-hmm. Stubbs card points, Uh-oh. and I got. Free I got that. I do. I get free upgrades. I get birthday presents and shit. Um, I got the thirty dollar ticket for five bucks because I saw a whole bunch of movies this oh, year. That's cool. <laughs> You're gonna talk to AMC. I'm about gonna read the movie the show, spoiler <laughs> about it the day after it comes out, then I'll go see it. That's why I'm going. This at is a Ryan 6 Johnson PM. movie. You shouldn't do that to yourself. Ryan Johnson <laughs> makes fantastic films. This uh, the, the Star Wars and fan Brick. And Brick. the Brick's amazing. fan event starts at six p.m. So I'm gonna be in the theater from. So you're like seeing the movie 6 later than everybody until else until midnight. Well, no, but I'll be in the theater the entire time because right. they're playing but Force Awakens seeing, first. Force Awakens is two and a half hours. I'm seeing right. I'm seeing Last Jedi at seven, so I'm seeing it before you, and you still. You're, you're seeing still it before me, experience. but I won't get spoilers. I'm going to no, be in the theater. No, you're a fucking poser. That's what it is. No, it's because I Posers. could not. <laughs> I couldn't get. I actually wanted the trading cards. Does this include an hour of the cantina band just playing <laughs> the music? <laughs> band? And yeah. she gets to sit on Chewbacca's lap while the movie plays. I, yeah. Oh, my God. If I could have a Chewbacca seat. Yep. <laughs> well, if that, that, you're going to the one in Rocky River, right? Yes. So if they, I mean, they could theoretically cover all of those recliners with, like, Wookiee fur. Yeah. That would be next level well, shit. Well, I'm doing the Crocker Park IMAX, and they have recliners, too. They Do they? IMAX? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, they, it's the only IMAX in the Northeast Ohio. Well, I didn't know they had recliner chairs I thought chairs they had there. one at Great Lakes Science they just Center. Put them in. It's only 42 That's inches, an Omnimax. Though. What's the difference? Omnimax is Three a letters? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Omni means opt... I don't know. <laughs> um, not, Actually, you guys have me more excited about that than... Yeah, we're doing we're doing the prequels uh, for the first three 
weeks before the movie. I just, I, uh, yeah, I found out what my Thanksgiving plans are, and it turns out I'll be a lot of fucking driving back and forth across the outer suburbs of Cleveland all day. I get day. to work for double time. Nobody's going to be shopping, really. Exactly. Oh, that's brilliant. I don't have to do anything, and I don't have to see my family. And you can make macaroni and cheese bites. <laughs> yeah. Out of chicken mac. Yeah. Oh. Chicken mac and cheese, deep fried bites. We should stop. We should I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> yeah, all right. I just had Chipotle before I came here. So I yeah. had a well, chicken pot pie. Oh, but yeah. Well, everybody's having chicken tonight, I guess. I feel like chicken um, tonight. So I think since the last time you were on, there's been some reconfiguring of your current projects. I know that the indoor drive in sort of died up. Sort of DOA. Death. I, uh, I'm doing like a, I'm doing it in my house now, but it's more just friends. Just I would small. hope so. Not, uh, yeah, I'm not inviting strangers into my house. <laughs> um, even if they want to come into my house, I mean, yeah. Universal honestly, can suck it. Yeah, go, you can they can sit suck on the dick. porch. Like, that was um, that's so fucked up. Like you weren't hurting is, anyone. I get it. Like you know, intellectual you gotta, property, Michelle. Come on. I mean, if I made the thing, I'd be like, hey, stop showing the thing for free. But you know. Um, uh, that actually, I'm not making any money off of it, so it's like, go right. fuck yourself. Like, what happened? I show my thing all the time for free. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just no, like I, Louis I, the, C.K. The driving oh. guy. I had to cancel there you my, got it. my Thank show you. because uh-huh. Universal caught wind that I was showing one of their movies, The Thing. Uh, and I hope I it wasn't because of this show. So you sure? It's like, hey, Who don't narked? do that. So. I think it was, was it Facebook? They saw that your... your no, Your Facebook I, event or something? I think what I, from what I gather, uh, I got a write up in Cleveland.com uh, about right. the show. And then uh, the police chief or the fire chief saw it and they had to double check with permits and it just went further up the line. Oh, bunch of bullshit. But, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. And, you know, well, you're driving it was, it was all those kind cars of into May Hall. So. That's true. <laughs> I kept driving problem. all those in the walls and making all that noise. And, uh. But I'm the real problem here, so. Yeah. Well, so other than that, uh, Second Shot Podcast with you and Devin yeah. Newsom. Yeah, we're, uh, we're now on a uh, um, a podcast network How above does that below. Work? Uh, basically means I don't have to pay for hosting anymore. Oh, <laughs> well, there's that. Uh, we throw some ads on the beginning and end of it, and that's pretty much it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's uh, uh, Jordan Patrick's um, uh, podcast network. It's kind of a subsidiary of Lousy Weather Media. Gotcha. Um, they put out some real good shit. Um, but yeah, we're just, we're, we're, we're plowing through with our episodes. You know, we're, like I said, we're doing, um, the star Wars prequels by probably by the time this gets out. Um, so we're going to have a few people on, um, a guy from, uh, uh, signals Midwest, okay. Jeff Russell, um, I know that Mason guy. Newson from, uh, two hand fools. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure who we have for Avengers of the Sith, but, um, yeah, we're doing all that. <laughs> we're, um, <laughs> crossover event. <laughs> no, I think we already have someone booked or have ah, cool. If we have someone who doesn't like The Force Awakens, I'm down. Um but yeah, we're we're we're, uh, we're going to have like uh Justice League bonus episode we're talking about because DC hasn't put out a good movie yet. Um <laughs> ever. I mean, How, Wonder Woman was Wonder Woman supposed to be good. It's okay. Okay. Well, is it's, it is it good compared to the other compared shit to everything put out? else? Okay. I, could, yeah. I could go on a whole rant about superhero movies. I already did earlier today. Did you do it yeah. on mic? No. You were I didn't. just giving away content for free, Michelle. Spewing it into the air. <laughs> Everything what good is, is content that now. Do? Yes. You need to monetize, monetize, monetize. Mm. Yeah. Like us. <laughs> yeah. We make no money. Um Yeah. Just second shot podcast at gmail.com if you want to be on it or if you just wanna uh I don't know, talk shit about us, that's fine. That works I mean, too. I do it too. So uh, we have a number that I don't know. Off of, I'll look up the number real quick while I'm talking. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can call us and all that crap. Um, we have we have one guy who comes on, calls on all the time. He calls his characters like he called Bam Margera this week. Oh god, that was um, funny. It was very funny. It, that was, sounded so much like Bam Margera too. My stupid ass ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yes. Our number is 216-309-0942. I don't know why I'm plugging that number on the podcast, not on another person's right. podcast, but whatever. We have a phone number, too. We've got a lot of the same yeah, I know. listeners, I've called it before. I'm sure. 216-438-1077 if you want to call us or text us or send us pictures or uh, complain about something or tell us that the IRS is going to come after us for unpaid taxes. Yeah. Um, 
We did, for we did have a really yeah. sad text from uh, about a week ago <laughs> that I got to the Slurm cast number. Um, someone said like, hey, bro, just wanted to let you know that Ma died. <laughs> <laughs> Funerals next week. And I feel bad did that we're laughing back? about this. Not but Ma. Well, I, I, did, I did answer them back. And I said, I'm sorry, you're texting a podcast. Uh, sorry for your loss, weird, but you've got the wrong weirdly number. Weirdly existential response. <laughs> um, either that, like, I told Michelle, like, it's, it's either... A bad number or next real. level trolling. Yeah, I don't know if it was real. I'm I, sorry. I think I'm it could have been. It I really could have been anyone. <laughs> it could have been anyone just trying to fuck with us. But that's like in poor taste. Um, uh, it was if me. it is like, because <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, only fathers die on this podcast. I think we've established that early <laughs> on. So when I called in uh, as Horchi, the ghost Horses of Horchi's, Horchi's dad, dad. Yeah, I didn't know he was actually dead. Yeah. So yeah. I felt and now bad. and Aww. and apparently Horchie's dead to us too. So it all works out, George. Oh, I love Horchie. I, don't well, know. I we do too. Talking. We do too. It's ju- just for the record. No, I know. We he's love dead Horchie. to you. No, we're, we're probably dead to him. For the record, court he's... ordered. We love Horchie. <laughs> <laughs> Contractually obligated for the next six months. <laughs> yes. Uh, until <laughs> Michelle's Poochie contract. Runs out. <laughs> she's Damn more it. of a Roy. You know, she's a Roy. <laughs> What's up? Oh. <laughs> on, on that note, thank you for coming on, George. Always yeah, a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, we can be reached at slurmcast.com. That's where you can get all of our episodes directly to download or listen to. It has links to our shop at Tee Public, where you can get a bunch of really wonderful Futurama themed t shirts. Uh, we did sell another one. Oh, we did? Yeah. yeah. We are rolling in the fractional sense. Rolling in the deep. Uh, we can be emailed at slurmcastpod at gmail.com. We're on uh, Facebook. I think we're the only Slurm cast on there, so that's easy to find. Uh, we're on. Ever Inst- made Slurm? Uh, I'll talk to you about that later. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, it was an adult <laughs> conversation. It's yeah. a late- Slurm cast late. It night. goes back to that thing you were saying about sharding earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Slurm cast after dark. Twitter and Instagram at Slurm cast pod. Um, rate and review us in iTunes. Keep listening. Um, we did. Just announced last week or shortly, some time ago, that we're kind of slowing down the release schedule for a little bit, right? <laughs> I don't even know where we are. You, when you ask you've ever made Slurm, it sounds like somebody asked you, like, hey, man, you ever hang brain? <laughs> 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 like, just something like some very weird <laughs> sexual hey, innuendo. Hey, Pete, like, you ever made whoopee? Double entendre. <laughs> <laughs> made whoopee what? She, she made me he wear got, blackface once. It did not go over well. Are you Billy Crystal? Ted Danson. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I love yeah, Ted that was a, that was a thing. What a poor, and, unfortunate choice. <laughs> she asked him to do it. Yeah. That's really the, the whole problem is, like, Ted was just, he was uh, acceding to his lover's wishes, and it just created a I didn't even know he dated yeah, no. they made a move. Go they back and listen together. to our podcast. We've talked about it a million times. Listen to the episode yeah. that you, we haven't released yet. Oh, where is we it talked the about cast? Ted Danson. The, Ted Danson and Whoopi Goldberg were a hot Hollywood couple. You can fade out over this, Tom. I love Ted Danson. And they made a movie called <laughs> Made in America that was about an interracial uh, love relationship where oh. they had like a blended family, and it was great. And that was all around the same time. I don't know if they met on set and got together or like were together then made the movie, and then. She was hosting like an NAACP awards and asked him to come out dressed in blackface. Oh. And well, and that's why Theodore Rex exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was, it, you know, the sister act two couldn't fix that. <laughs> bon nuit, bon nuit to you all. <laughs> <laughs>